for research. So we look into, you know, something that you may want, don't want to hear it, or you may be something you don't like to hear it, because in looking through the so-called other people say is wrong, we might find out if this is right. And so when you have the two sides of the story, maybe you will be enlightened, you know? So this is the yin and yang principle of teaching. Okay, so chantings, right? So we also, we all been puzzled, you know, throughout our journey of learning, isn't it? So you cannot ignore it because it's been recorded in all over the world, all over the world, people in different types, you know? But what is it? What is chanting? So what I could say is, now, okay, as a research fellow, let's look into some historical background first, okay? Now, like I said, I'm only qualified in the Chinese side. We're all over the world, so I'm not qualified to talk about other people. So now we call it, obviously, we all call it spiritual ceremony. So in Chinese side, it's a wushu. Now, because everything now relating is, is spirit, right, in the ancient time. Uh, spirits all over the world. But it's fair enough, it's only a name. We don't want to argue with a name. As a research fellow, so we try to find out with more modern data and more scientific way. Okay, yeah. So now we have spiritual ceremony, we call wu, wu shu, yeah. And then we have spiritual sounds, we call wu a. And then also spiritual dance, right, wu wu. And then we obviously we have the spiritual healing, wu yi. And I'm a physician, I'm a doctor, okay? So I can only talk to you about in science, medical science, human science, okay? So if you want some spiritualism and religious, you know, uh, shall we say connection with it, so I'm sorry, you know, you, you come to the wrong teachers. So I respect all religions, so by all means, you know, but, uh, but I'm, I'm, we're not talking through that, yeah? But because it's a relation, they, they got connecting, because a lot of the time that this cell healing thing become miracle healing, just spiritual healing, which is fine. Nothing wrong with the words used, isn't it? So try not to argue with using the words. Okay, yeah. Okay, so maybe we go through some pictures, see, so please. I can see, so talk with the pictures. Okay, now most of the time when we have we're talking about spiritualism, okay, yeah, or rituals. So obviously, all country, all different races will have you know this kind of phenomenon it dating back really, really long time. Now in China, from my PhD research about uh, seventeen years ago, one of my 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 chapter was talking about this. So when did it happen in China? Like I said, I don't know about other other, other countries. So I can only talk about in Chinese history. So through archaeological diggings and uh, the all, all these. Um, ancient tax uh, etymology as well what i can trace is the earliest type of this kind of spiritual worshiping you call or, or ceremony or, or rituals they they found some bones which is uh, in china so now the eighteen thousand years ago i can only say that because that means that the body of the deceased the body is not being thrown out it has been treated with red oxide that is where we have like spiritual dancing and yeah the then we have the spiritual sound and then gradually we have you know, the body start having a self-healing so we have spiritual healing okay now obviously in ancient time anybody would pick up something anybody would pick up something to beat it to just make some sound so we are talking about sound now today we got a very good words for it it's like sound therapy but thousand and thousand years ago in China, it called Zhu Yao Su, and other people may be talking about chanting, so just different name. So the sound, so that means we're having a frequency. So that means sound is also an energy, and we just call qi. Okay. So that means be creating some atmosphere or some, shall we say, emotions and things like that during these spiritual rituals. So obviously, the bamboo is one of the thing that available uh, different shape and this and that the hollow sound and this and that you know and become music yep so put some sand and stone into it and shake it and create sound so we're talking about sounds okay during a ritual okay now this is very old stone the stone you got metallic thing okay. stone okay now these are musical instrument now they're dating back over a thousand years some of them they are all stone wow. the size and different thickness of stone give us the sound 
So that means in ancient time, we're using these natural elements to creating a sound. Okay. okay now this picture shows the lower part is all stone. And then later on, about 3,000, 4,000 years ago, the methodology in China is getting good. So we have all the brass, bronze, you know, uh, but these are bells, obviously, you know, so you hang it up there in different sizes and creating sound and then gradually creating music. And that's why it's very old, very old, okay? Okay, now other material use. This is uh, obviously a flute, right? And this is made of bone. And carbon-14 uh, tested on this bone flute is 9,000 years now in China. They think this thing up 9,000 years old, okay? So it pushed the civilization of Chinese civilization all the way back to 9,000 years. So that means at that time, the music and things like this were quite, quite well organized. So obviously the, the other, other, other knowledge in, in the civilization, we talk about 9,000, maybe 10,000 years old, okay? So that's from the archeological time. Okay, yeah. So now why want to bring it back in here because when you hit the thing and we in a ritual, okay, when we when when you when we in a ritual we can actually uh, trigger or trigger the spontaneous, right? We trigger the spontaneous. Okay. Uh, susceptibility between cosmic and human energy. Okay, yeah. In Chinese we call it tian yang gang ying. That means it's the sensations, sensitivity, receiving external outside body signals, we call qi, or you can call it vibration, you call it frequency, or in the olden term, people don't see it, so but something is there, so a lot of time people call it spirit, right? It's just a name, so don't argue about the name, please, okay? Yeah. So, and also we have interaction between cosmic and human energy, we call yin and hot, yeah? Okay, yeah? So, now, when we talk about Wai Qi, the external energy, now tonight we're talking about the sound. So really, it's only a stimulation, if we want to use the word to communicate better. It's something outside us to, as a stimulation, and then trigger, something trigger the interaction. So now you done, trigger the internal energy, which is obviously now when you look at it from the medical point, that means, you know, the internal natural body medicine, we call it done. And today we know that the majority of the internal medical reaction inside is obviously hormones. Hormones control our emotional and physiological you know, health issues. Okay, so that's why when we can have the understanding of the ancient dialects or the ancient I would say, languages, we might be able to look into, you know, uh, shall we say, a more scientific way. We can call it spirit, but then again, we, that's it. And it's dead end. <laughs> I mean, you can't. <laughs> what, what can you train? Okay. So that is why I want people just to look at as a stimulation and a re reaction. So during the rituals, the light. Now, this sound, obviously, during the ritual, is not just a sound. So first, it's the light of, of the fire. So when the fire was blinking. And that's why it sent another signal, right? And what is the signal? Light. So you can see today's television, you know, with all the uh, television about, you know, the warnings. And, you know, there's a flash camera, right? Uh, careful, because people do having a fit, a right? spasm. <laughs> if you have, you know, the, the light was flashing, people go into uh, a spasm, a fit, you know, situation. You, you know, it's well known. But, like in the internal, you know, um, our medicine, which you know, I specialize in, you know, I've, I've seen people every time, you know, having a fit on the floor, you know, capture it all on camera, having a spasm, some very small muscle, muscle skeletal spasm, creating all different kind of movement. And they look like animals, they look like people coming out. Now I can put it behind spirits, but what can we learn from that? We cannot learn anything from that. So therefore, I changed my learning to scientific and gradually, gradually, I found some answers. So I'm sharing with you. So the light goes in here. So what is it? So we got another misinterpretation like that. We, the Chinese call it the heaven eye, 
right? Oh, the English, the Indian will call it the third eye. That's fine. You know, there's all only languages, different languages. But is it really here? No, it's nothing here. It's actually the light. So what light sensitive? This is the receptor. So when we're training methodology, we are talking about sensory organs. And the light actually goes right there behind, what is it? The ear, the pineal glands. And for 5,000 years, the Chinese term is called Jade Palace. Your Hong and your Hong release your yin, the Jade liquid. And today we know it's monotonic. Monotonic is a, a master hormones. So by controlling the light intakes, right, we can actually stimulate, right? Obviously the activity of, you know, the pineal glands. And that's why when I gave, gave lectures in Hong Kong University and uh, Hong Kong University TCM and uh, Hong Kong University TCM faculty gave five, uh, four, four, four patients, which I have uh, captured all on camera the last time I showed it to you. It's about insomnia. So how can we treat insomnia? To, how are we gonna activate? the J palace. So this is why the light is sensitizing, right? Through the eye. And then the nose, obviously during the ritual, people are burning stuff and really strong sense of smell. Now you kick me into spontaneous because right here behind it is the pituitary glands. And in China, the ancient Chinese, we call it Lai Yun, the earth tablets. Okay, and Lai Yun will give up gum yi, the gold, golden liquid. So all this now we can pull it together. And today we know that there's dopamines and dolphins and, you know, loads of different hormones from the pituitary glands. So the thing is, can you activate these master glands? That is the whole thing of training qigong energy work. And during this ritual, so also don't forget, it's the sound, you know, the smells, or even people chewing, you know, herbs, it's like hashes and things. Okay, kick them into a spontaneous, so they have spontaneous spiritual dancing. And then through there, the body start regulating for self healing. So this is the whole procedures of natural body healing. Okay, yeah. So now we're talking about the sound, and when you hit the sound, it goes straight through here. This is the sensory receptor, and what's behind you? The pineal. Okay, so that means the answer to the first section here now, okay, is yes, it does work, but only 50-50 chances. So the next part is why is it some people is working for some people, and why is it not working for other people? Okay, so that means the answer to the first section here now, okay, is Yes, it does work, but only 50-50 chances. So the next part is, why is it some people is working for some people, and why is it not working for them?